Screws through and see what we can spot. The first thing that you'll certainly notice is all this green stuff spread throughout the pond. A lot of people confuse this for algae or pond scum, but you can't find some ponds. But that is not what this is. Oh, actually, hold that thought. I'll tell you what this is. But we've got some baby gators on the platform right beside Where? us there. You see the small baby moving oh, down the middle yeah, of the platform? Oh, yeah. Oh, there's actually one, it looks like, up at the left edge. And then there's another one at the bottom right. So there are three baby alligators on that platform right there. A little bit tough to see because they're so small. You can see one moving its tail right now. And when you see small baby gators like that, you want to look around for a mama gator. Yeah, you know, she's I'm not close. seeing her at the moment. Now, she could be underwater right near them or maybe along that tree line where we can't see her. But whenever you come across baby gators like that, mama's not usually going to be too far behind. A mama gator will stay with her babies for about two years after they're born to protect them. And she does aggressively defend her young. So if you ever come across a nest of small babies, you don't want to mess with it. That's good away from attack from mama if she feels like her babies are threatened. <laughs> Which is nice of Mama Gator to protect her young, but I'll tell you what, those babies have to watch out. Once those two years are up, she'll get aggressive towards them. And that's when they know it's time to leave her side and go off on their own. She'll basically run them out of the house whenever she thinks they're old enough to take care of themselves, so to speak. <laughs> Much like my mom did me. <laughs> and I'll tell you more about gators. Hopefully we'll spot a few more as we go through here. But yeah, this green stuff I was talking about is called duckweed. A lot of people confuse it for algae or pond scum. But this is duckweed. And duckweed is one of the smallest flowering plants in the world. Each individual plant is just a little green or red speck. You'll actually see more red here on the right side. But a little green or red speck. And the wind blows these together to form the big chunks. You'll see it's out of the pond here. And the ducks, they love to eat it. Hence that name, duckweed. Another small waterfowl will march on it as well. It's a great food source for them. It also acts as a water purifier. Whenever you see duckweed on water, it's usually a good indicator that it's very clean and healthy water. Of course, I don't want you to drink it, but as far as the wildlife is concerned, it's clean, healthy water for their purposes. And these islands out here, these are called rookeries, built for the birds. And you'll notice several small white birds spread throughout this rookery here. Those are mostly going to be juvenile little blue herons. It's the same type of bird we saw before we turned the corner, except they haven't turned blue yet. They don't get any bigger than that, but they will eventually turn all blue right in the water. There's a bunch of them up there. One, two, three, And then I'll see another type of bird, too. Yeah. Four right there. If you look Five. on the far top kind of right side of the rookery, you'll see a couple of birds that have tan neck and chest feathers with black lower bodies. Those are anhingas. A-N-H-I-N-G-A, and Hinga. And those are females. The females have the tan neck and chest feathers, the males are all black. But those are neat birds. When they hunt, they hunt underwater. They get over their breath for about 15 to 20 seconds underwater. And when they're lucky, when they pop to the surface, they'll have a little bit of water. And then you have a star of the show, a good old American alligator hanging out right there on the platform. There's also a family of ducks right up here as well. you got a mama duck, and it looks like maybe six or seven babies she's got trailing right behind her. Yeah, good old American alligator hanging on the platform. What about maybe four feet or so for that one? Which the tail of an alligator will always make up at least half its length, as you can kind of see there. And they'll use those tails to propel themselves through the water. That's their main swimming tool. You don't typically see alligators move very quick that often. But large adult alligators with long, powerful tails can hit speed swimming at up to about 20 miles per hour. So, unless your name is Michael Phelps, so I wouldn't recommend trying to ever ask those white birds are everywhere. They're all and those platforms, they look those like are like built white for flowers. the gators, which all the wildlife uses them. But they're built for the gators specifically because gators are cold-blooded reptiles, and they don't have an internal mechanism to maintain their body temperature, so they use outside sources like the go. sun and the water to heat and cool themselves. So they build the platforms out there so as sunning boards for the gators and the turtles to climb a bone to get some sun when they need it. It helps keep the gators on the pathways and of course gives us a great look at them when they are up on them. Though it doesn't always keep the gators off the pathways, they will still get up on these walkways to sun themselves as well. So you always want to be aware if you're walking around these areas because you are walking with the gators out here. That being said, though, we've never had an incident where the gator ever hurt anybody here in Magnolia. And they're not typically aggressive towards humans. The attacks are very few and far between, but they have happened in other places. So always be very aware. You certainly don't want to become the first incident here at Magnolia. Uh, what's that?